look yes. at all, all, all over the, the, the lands. So glad you all are here. Welcome to Jewish Voice for Peace mass meeting. We are so, so grateful that all of you are here and are spending your Wednesday night like this together. We're so happy you're here. Keep introducing yourselves. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. This is really exciting. Um, well, we are going to um, be your host for this evening. Um, my name is Una Osato, and I am a member leader um, here in New York City. And um, uh, yeah. Yes. And my name is Morgan Basicus, also a proud member of the JVP New York City chapter and just proud member of JVP in general with, with you all. Great. Um, I, I'm not sure if we're supposed to be spotlit or if that's just my um, thing, but I, oh, there, okay. Um, and great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I need a spotlight. <laughs> okay, great. Oh, there we are. Um, <laughs> um, well, we are here to do um, some incredible um, work together and organizing. And um, this is a very um, exciting night and a very powerful night. Um, and we are going to be uh, your hosts in it. Um, so over the last year, Jewish Voice for Peace and Jewish Voice for Peace Action have engaged thousand, um, a thousand JVP members um, and dozens of Palestinian and other movement partners to get crystal clear um, on our mandate and what, to be clear, of what, how we will be most useful um, as JVP and as JVP action um, and to contribute most to the Palestine movement for the next five years. Um, and so maybe you participated in it uh, in a chapter meeting or a network call or, or some part of this humongous process. And um, we are so grateful to each and every one of you who has been part of this. Yes, um, we want to give a couple of special thank yous first to the amazing Jade Brooks and Lone Tron who shepherded our leaders and partners through dozens of conversations. And then a really deep, deep thank you to our former bo uh, board chair, Isaac Lev Smonko, who co-led the process um, with our executive director, Stephanie Fox. So just deep, deep gratitude to um, Jade and Lone and Isaac and Stephanie. Um, and tonight we're going to hear a synthesis of everything we heard from partners and members in the form of a five-year plan to challenge U.S. support for Israeli apartheid, because we know this is our job, this is our mandate, and this is the work that we will do. We will end U.S. support for Israel, for Israeli apartheid. So um, we're, also, um, we're also here tonight to invite each of us, all of us, to step up into uh, into this plan because this is this is this is our collective work together. It's, it's, it's going to take all of us. It's going to take literally all of us. So, yeah, welcome. Yes, um, and I think we we uh, we just want to do some a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we're going to be here for the next hour and a half. And so we want you to make yourself comfortable, um, get some tea, get some note, uh, take some paper out, um, whatever is going to allow you to be present. Um, and we're going to drop a link in the chat now with the agenda for tonight. So you can um, be aware of uh, what we're going to be covering. Um, and we are going to be having live closed captioning tonight. Um, and so you can turn on the closed captioning by going to the black bar at the bottom of the screen and selecting closed captions. Um, and at different points in the evening, the, the chat will be either off or on so that we can focus on the speakers um, or it'll be on uh, so we can um, engage with one, one another. Um, and so when it's on, please, uh, you know, like you're already doing, uh, engage and um, amplify uh, and uh, yeah, be with each other. You all know how to do this. <laughs> um, um. So also, of course, bigotry of any kind in the chat will not be tolerated and anyone responsible for any will be promptly removed from the event. So we have moderators who will take care of that. Um, and in general, we're going to aim to listen and engage as though we are all here in person together to use the chat to help build a supportive uh, culture um, together. 
Um, so we're going to keep this going. And um, I'm so excited um, and honored um, now to pass the mic to some of our most important, powerful leaders. Um, uh, uh, important. No, no, sorry, I'll take that back because we are we are all the important um, and, and powerful leaders. Um, these are um, um, among us some really powerful leaders also um, who prepared some words to share with us all. So um, welcome to our partner. Across the world, people answering calls for justice in their own communities. And are increasingly understanding that no matter where we live on this planet, we all need to help strengthen the Palestine freedom movement. Every day, in the face of enormous violence, our Palestinian sisters and brothers continue to fight for justice. We cannot be silent onlookers. We must stand with them in a global community of struggle. Just as Jewish Voice for Peace has always taken leadership from Palestinians fighting for their freedom, JVP also offers leadership, advancing the important and critical role for Jewish communities to play in this struggle. JVP has emerged as one of the most important progressive organizations in our country. And given the present conditions in Israel and Palestine, this is an essential moment for JVP to escalate its organizing. There has never been a more urgent time for each of us to find our roles in the struggle for Palestinian freedom, which is also the struggle for a just future for all of the people inhabiting this planet. We are in a moment when it's not just the earth that is flammable. Our politics are intensely flammable as well. After decades of neoliberal politics and attacks on labor standards, we now have a wave of strongmen political figures around the world who are all trading strategies, tactics, and technologies for how to come to power by pitting populations against each other. In response, we need to build a more holistic, values-driven, progressive movement that doesn't throw anyone under the bus, that doesn't sacrifice anyone. Nowhere is this more important than in the case of Israel's increasingly bloody and brutal apartheid regime over Palestinians. Solidarity with Palestinians must become the kind of global movement that put an end to apartheid in South Africa. Jewish Voice for Peace has an indispensable role in that movement. JVP has built the political community, deep partnerships, and focused strategy needed to organize Jews into a serious challenge to Israeli apartheid. Thank you all, and I'll see you out there. My name is Lada Kiswani, and I'm the executive director of AROC, the Arab Resource and Organizing Center. The movements we come from are very much shaped by international feminists. And through that lens, we know what is made possible by understanding that when we link struggles, when we build broad-based movements, we do so not only in an effort to support others, but also as part of our own struggles and aspirations. We also know that as those living in the United States, we bear the responsibility we inherit in the belly of the beast. And in this light, JVP developing this thoughtful and timely strategy is truly in service of our movements for justice. Our work together as a broader movement is in large part to make, to make it impossible for the United States to continue its violent project of economic, political, and military domination, and understanding that apartheid Israel is an instrument of US imperialism. The role of our allies, our anti-Zionist Jewish allies, in particular, is critical in this liberatory project. While we've made advances in the US and internationally, the question right now is how do we seize on the time and build on that momentum to make concrete gains against US imperialism and apartheid Israel? 
and the authoritarian right? How do our Jewish allies help us defend our gains against Zionist repression? How do we create opportunities for the wider left to draw on the leadership of Palestinians? And how do we ensure that Zionists and other racists do not co-opt radical and progressive movements? How do we ensure that JVP, the largest progressive Jewish organization, is the dominant Jewish voice in progressive spaces? These are the critical questions that, in my humble opinion, JVP has taken up the hard work of engaging today. With JVP's embodiment of an anti-colonial, an anti-racist worldview, we can work to ensure that we do not leave a vacuum to be filled by the right, and that the alliances between Zionists and other right-wing forces are not only exposed, but disrupted. And that the fight for Palestinian freedom continues to be a litmus test for what racial and social justice means today. These are both really difficult and exciting times. And I think what's helpful is to remember that with our collective commitment to each other's liberation and freedom, truly anything is possible. Thank you, JVP, for taking on this work. We look forward to working with you to ensure that everybody's freedom is realized. So just really grateful to all those speakers for um, sharing those words um, and really what Laura said, if anything is possible, what a, what a profound way to enter this meeting today. Um, and I'm really excited to invite up uh, Rabbi Brent Rosen, the co-founder of JVP's Rabbinical Council and the rabbi to the first anti-Zionist synagogue in the country, Tzedek, Chicago, to continue to ground us and why we're, why we're here. So please welcome uh, Rabbi Brent Rosen. Thank you, Morgan and Una. Uh, boy, this is truly exciting, over 500 people and growing. Um, I'm honored to be able to, uh, to address you tonight as part of this gathering. I'm honored to be part of it. Uh, just to offer a few thoughts very briefly. <clears throat> I'm still in, a, in kind of a Yom Kippur mode. It's still resonating for me uh, in very, very powerful ways. And I just wanted to share with you a few thoughts uh, that continue to resonate for me from our our experience at Set at Chicago. And don't worry, I'm not going to read you my sermon or anything like that. Uh, but one of the things that I mentioned uh, more than once actually is that Yom Kippur is a is a radical holiday. It has at its core and at its essence a very very radical message, which is that the world needs changing our lives need changing the world needs changing and we need to commit to the hard work to transform it and the only way we can do that is to take a hard and unflinching look at the status quo uh, and insist that we do not have to accept the status quo uh, so this is truly uh, what we do every year uh, that nothing short of a genuine intervention will do that's what we affirm every year in yom kippur so really, if our prayers on Yom Kippur are to mean anything at all, we have to be prepared to act on this radical idea of transformation. Uh, for us in my congregation, and for all of you, uh, or many of you I know, uh, the issue of solidarity with Palestinians uh, and the act of solidarity with Palestinians is, is, is something that is sacred. Uh, it's, you know, to use our parlance, uh, solidarity with Palestinians is a mitzvah. And it is part and parcel of a larger kind of work for common liberation for all. Uh, we, it was our honor on Yom Kippur to invite and welcome Omar Barghouti in our afternoon program to be our teacher for the day. And uh, Omar, as I'm sure many of you know, is uh, a Palestinian. He's a, the co-founder of the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions movement. And he, he said some, enormously powerful and impactful things for uh, for us. There were over 150 people at this program from around the world. And I just want to quote to you what he said. Um, I, and I want to add that he mentioned JVP repeatedly during his remarks. And I'm quoting, ethical reconciliation is key to the pursuit of freedom, justice, dignity, and equality, and ultimately flows from repentance, reparation, and reimagining identities beyond binaries. This vision of common liberation is not an illusion or a utopian dream. It's possible, necessary, and attainable in our lifetime. A crucial dimension of this process is what anti-Zionist Jewish partners to Palestinians call 
Jewish liberation from Zionism. So as I said, he uh, mentioned Jew Jewish Voice for Peace as a critical part of uh, this work toward common liberation. And I feel so privileged and honored to be part of this movement as well. And that's why I'm, I've been so looking forward to tonight. Uh, it is a time, as been mentioned before, of historic crisis in so many ways, but it's also a time of historic opportunity. Uh, and I'm looking forward uh, to the presentation uh, from JVP uh, and the possibilities that will emerge from it. So thank you very much. And uh, th thank you so much, Rabbi. Um, uh, we actually, it's like, <laughs> um, we it's our honor actually to share our next um, speaker is um, the co-founder of the BDS movement and extraordinary leader, Omar Barghouti, who has prepared remarks for us for tonight. So um, thank you for bringing us in, um, bringing him in, and, and we're so grateful for, for uh, what we're going to share with you now. For and for Omar. I'm honored to participate in this launch of JVP's strategy document. I consider JVP not just a principled strategic partner in the global Palestinian led BDS movement for freedom, justice, and equality, but also as among the most effective and inspiring spaces worldwide that give us hope every day that we can and shall prevail over Israel's 75-year-old regime of settler colonialism and apartheid. If, as I believe, there's a symbiotic relationship between Palestinian liberation from Zionist settler colonialism and Jewish liberation from Zionism, then JVP, with its brilliant strategy, is becoming a leading catalyst in these intertwined liberations. As the largest progressive anti-Zionist Jewish organization in the world, JVP, with moral consistency and impeccable strategic vision, is building grassroots power to counter the pernicious role that Jewish Zionist organizations play in upholding the US-Israel colonial alliance. There are cracks in this alliance, but it remains ironclad, mainly due to the vast influence of Israel's anti-Palestinian pressure groups not just the Jewish Zionist lobby, but also the Christian Zionist and military industrial lobbies. They play an unparalleled role in ensuring US and by extension Western complicity in and unconditional support for Israel's regime of oppression. As a result, with utter impunity, Israel is perpetrating massacres, besieging, bombing, incarcerating, and bringing to the verge of starvation 2 million Palestinians in Gaza. It is ethnically cleansing our communities, especially in Jerusalem, brutalizing Muslim Palestinian worshippers, desecrating Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, and emboldening anti-Christian attacks by Jewish fundamentalist settlers and their supporters on Palestinian churches, symbols, and cemeteries. In short, and as Amnesty International stated in its watershed apartheid report last year, Israel treats indigenous Palestinians as an inferior racial group. Defending Israel's settler colonial regime is becoming exponentially more difficult with the current government, the most far-right, unmasked, racist, fundamentalist, authoritarian, corrupt, sexist, and homophobic ever. This gives us an unprecedented opportunity to grow, accelerate, and mainstream our BDS campaigns. In a telling sign of this opportunity, some prominent Zionist Jewish figures have recently called for conditioning, reducing or entirely phasing out U.S. military funding to Israel. Over 2,700 prominently Jewish and Jewish-Israeli scholars, including mainstream figures, have signed a recent statement titled The Elephant in the Room that admits, quote, there cannot be democracy for Jews in Israel as long as Palestinians live under a regime of apartheid, end of quote, and calls on U.S. elected officials to restrict military funding and end Israeli impunity in the U.N. and elsewhere. Once sacred taboos are being shattered like never before. Opportunities alone, however, do not lead to change. They only provide the fertile ground for it. We still need to exercise our agency, 
and maximize our morally consistent work building people's power and strong intersectional alliances that integrate the struggle for Palestinian liberation with global struggles for racial, economic, social, gender, indigenous, and climate justice. As Israel sheds its liberal mask and increasingly reveals its inherent colonial nature, more and more progressive Jewish Americans can no longer reconcile their values with those of Israel or Zionism. They're increasingly gravitating towards solidarity with the Palestinian justice struggle, and many are finding their political and spiritual home in JVP. In its historic statement on Zionism, JVP has significantly revived the sorely missed Jewish critique of Zionism for harming Jewish safety and well-being, not just Palestinians. Indeed, if a key feature of anti-Semitism is essentializing all Jews, reducing them to a monolithic group, then Zionism and Israel are guilty of fanning the flames of anti-Semitism by claiming to speak for all Jews, treating them like a tribe, calling on them to go home to Israel in the face of rising anti-Semitic attacks in their home countries, and partnering with patently anti-Semitic supremacist and authoritarian forces worldwide. Moreover, by promoting the fraudulent and weaponized IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, which is designed to suppress advocacy of Palestinian rights and which centers shielding Israel from accountability, Israel has effectively thrown the struggle against real anti-Jewish racism under the bus. In pursuit of freedom, justice, dignity, and equality, ethical decolonization is tied to ethical reconciliation, which flows from repentance, reparation, and reimagining identities beyond binaries in the aftermath of dismantling systems of oppression, relative humanization, and supremacy. This is not an illusion or a utopian dream. It is possible. It is necessary. It is attainable in our lifetime. As Omar so beautifully just articulated, the world that we want is attainable. And if we're going to fight for it, and if we're going to fight to win it, we need to know what our horizon is. My name is Shelby. I'm one of the chapter organizers on JVP staff, and I'm honored to be about to share JVP and JVP Action's new vision statement with this fierce chorus that you see arriving of JVP chapter leaders. So please welcome Sarah Kaplan Gould and Franny Alani from the Denver Boulder chapter, and Rachel Edelman and Emmett Strauss Stanfield from the Seattle chapter. And let's call in together the future that we're here to build. We envision a world where all people, from the U.S. to Palestine, live in freedom, justice, equality, and dignity. Like generations of Jewish leftists before us, we fight for the liberation of all people. We believe that through organizing, we can and will dismantle the institutions and structures that sustain injustice and grow something new, joyful, beautiful, and life-sustaining in their place. We picture the concrete of the apartheid wall in pieces on free Palestinian soil. We picture Israeli jails, prisons, and detention centers emptied and dismantled. We picture the return of Palestinian refugees reuniting with their families and communities. We picture Palestinians from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea living with their inalienable rights respected, building schools and hospitals and planting olive groves with the resources they need. We imagine Jewish Israelis released from conscripted violence against Palestinians. Free from dehumanizing others, which in turn diminishes their own humanity. We imagine Jewish Israelis joining Palestinians to build a just society. Rooted in equality rather than supremacy. Dignity rather than domination. Democracy rather than dispossession. A society where every life is precious. Throughout the Jewish diaspora. 
we envision our communities beginning to heal from Zionism's attempts to dilute and erase many of our diasporic histories, languages, and traditions. We envision replacing Jewish institutions that use fear to keep us in line with a proliferation of thriving and vibrant Jewish communities. Building safety for ourselves and all our neighbors, grounded in a vision of dignity, power, and love for all people. Thank you so much for um, reading that beautiful vision and just that so powerful to hear you all say these words because it is our collective vision that we will make it happen. So just so grateful to you all. Um, and I'm really, really excited to continue to share with us more about this five-year vision and plan. Um, our, our beloved executive director, Stephanie Fox, who we are just so grateful to have at the helm of our organization every single day. Um, we're so grateful for her and we welcome Stephanie Fox to share more about this, this plan. Thank you, Morgan. That was super moving to hear. And I'm just in general, really, um, hi, everybody. I'm just feeling a very deep Shehekianu of the moment, uh, a deep sense of gratitude for all that has brought us um, to this exact time and place together. You know, we have nearly 30 years of history in Jewish Voice for Peace organizing together. I see members in the list here who founded some of our first chapters. I see our some of most, our most beloved, closest partners. I see our longtime executive director and one of my closest mentors, Rebecca Vokomerson. I see folks who started our Black Indigenous Jews of Color Sephardi Mizrahi Network. I just see so many leaders here who didn't just build JVP, but even before JVP built and led movements that laid the very foundation that allowed us to form. And I also see names that have never graced a JVP or JVP action Zoom. Welcome. I'm just like feeling into those years of history that are between and behind us. Um, and I just also want to admit that sometimes, even with all of that history and all of that grounding, Sometimes it just feels incredibly overwhelming to, to sort of step up to the enormity of the scale of crises that are before us. And the plan that we've collectively built together is aiming to situate us in the face of that catastrophe that we look at each day, be clear where we are and have a focused understanding of the most important opportunities and obligations for this time that we're in right now. Um, and so looking at what those strategic opportunities and obligations are on the next slide, we wanna really hone in on the fact that the we have to fight the far right in the US, in Israel and around the world. We understand that those forces are accelerating their supremacist agendas through shared tactics and funding. And that the groups funneling billions of private dollars into settler violence on the ground in Palestine are the same groups pouring money into attacks on trans people, Black people, Jews and Muslims, abortion rights in this country, and so many more attacks on so many more of our communities. We're ground down and overwhelmed, I believe, because we're taking those crises one at a time. We, we accept some sort of notion that we're alone or that our struggles can be atomized. And as everyone's been saying already tonight, we are not alone and our struggles are not separate. And the way to move past the overwhelm as organizers is to understand that our crises are connected. And by doing so, we can bring more and more people into a bigger, broader, more united progressive movement that is connected, intersectional, and never leaves Palestinian freedom behind. We also have to understand that we have enormous obligation to move our own Jewish communities in this time. As Omar was saying, the mask is off. And I really believe two things are true right now. One is that more and more Jews every day are ready to join us. Look, we know that 70% of liberal Jews agree the US should condition military funding based on Israel's human rights abuses. So that is true. And at the same time, we also know that about 70% of US Jews also feel that Israel is somehow necessary to the survival of Jewish people outside of Israel. I just wanna let that sink in, right? Both of these things are true. And we understand here tonight that many of us 
are taught a version of history that says that our communities have always been alone, under attack, and always will be. That the state of Israel and its backers are promoting this version of history as in a way to turn our fear of anti-Semitism into a weapon. They say that the best response to fear is a bigger gun, a taller wall, a more humiliating checkpoint. And so our task is to meet people where they are, to radically welcome them into a political home where they can find support, connection, learning, unlearning, where we understand that we dismantle anti-Semitism in a framework of collective liberation, and where we offer an invitation into a vision of justice, equality, and freedom, as was just chorused for us by our members, that is so much more compelling, morally consistent, and durable as a reimagining of the future for our people and for all people. Finally, we have to change the bottom line. We have to understand and get serious about, as Lara said, our role in the belly of the beast in the United States. Billions of dollars every year of private and public money uphold the U.S.-Israel alliance. I was just spending, I just spent three weeks with our comrades in South Africa to learning from elders from the movement to topple apartheid there who are now fighting for Palestinian freedom. And the conversation I had over and over and over again was that from the U.S., our most important role is to look that billions of dollars in the face and refuse to understand it as unshakable. Understand that our task is to move past internal discussions, hand-wringing, symbolic campaign, and to focus on material change through boycott and divestment campaigns. We can change the bottom line and make that status quo of investment in an apartheid economy unacceptable un and a losing deal. Finally, we also can't just be divesting from the U.S.-Israel alliance for apartheid, Jewish and Christian Zionist organizations seem to have an endless stream of resources. We all see that to spend, to threaten, to punish, to criminalize organizing by Palestinians and anyone who fights for Palestinian rights. So divesting from the Israel U.S. alliance for apartheid is critical, and so too is calling for investment in the movements we all need that are fighting to win multiracial democracy, freedom, safety, sovereignty, and justice for all people, no exceptions. So how do we take advantage of these opportunities, be very clear in our obligation to meet this particular moment? It's kind of simple. It's what we're going to do is we're going to build to fight. We are going to welcome an unprecedented number of Jewish people to join us in the political home of JVP and the broader movement. And we are going to fight to win. Our role in Jewish Voice for Peace and JVP action is to shake what generations of U.S. presidents have told us is unshakable, but we know was built by people and can be dismantled. We are going to shake the U.S.-Israel alliance by fundamentally shifting the financial, the cultural, and the political calculus of Jewish support for Israeli apartheid. And finally, what are going to be some keys to our success in this work? Okay, so we have years of experience to draw from. What do we know we need to bring to this moment? We need to focus on strengthening our core organizing model. That means growing local organizing to unprecedented levels, investing in leadership development, and embodying Jewishness liberated from Zionism within all parts of our organizing. We're also going to move as one, right? This We have beautiful organizing bodies throughout the organization. We all are going to bring the beautiful crystallization of our power to focus on the same specific targets, make that material impact we're talking about. And while understanding in a very focused way the specific contributions and focused mandate that we have as an organization, we're also from that position going to deepen and broaden our alliances as part of a progressive internationalist anti-racist front fighting the right. And finally, we're going to work to embody our vision and our values everywhere in the organization. Our accountability to our Palestinian partners, our responsibility to our own kin, to our Jewish communities, and our commitment to racial justice and collective liberation are like a like braid of a Havdalah candle that like lights the whole week. You know, it like just brings us up, brings us, brings us in everything we do, that core understanding of our work, our role, and the values that ground us. So these are some of the core things we're going to be bringing throughout the rest of the night. And I'm so excited to hand it back. Thanks everyone for being here. Thank you so much, Stephanie, 
for for sharing this with us uh and and all your incredible work thank you thank you thank you um okay well um next we're gonna dig deeper into the meat of what we're talking about and what we aim to achieve in these next five years and we're gonna bring up um jvp actions political director beth miller who's here um and then we're gonna hear from uh, iran Efrant efranti Am I saying his name wrong? Oh, no. I okay. Um, he's uh, the U.S. Campaigns and Partnerships Director. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Una, and thank you for that grounding, uh, Stephanie. That was powerful to hear you present all all at once after um, so long building this plan together. Um, it is so amazing to be on this call with all of you right now. I'm seeing over 590 people on this call right now. I can feel the power coming out of the computer. Um, so I'm gonna start by talking one of our about one of our first key strategic objectives that we have in this plan. We're getting into the nitty gritty now. So for JVP Action, the, fam, the, the organization and our family of organizations that is focused on political and advocacy work, we have a pretty straightforward goal. It is to end U.S. complicity, U.S. government complicity in Israeli apartheid. And that's not actually that complicated to figure out what that entails, right? That's $3.8 billion in unconditional military funds every single year. And that's the work that the U.S. government does to bend over backwards to shield the Israeli government from any sort of accountability in the international arena. That's our job. We have to be unapologetic in our demands when we are talking to the US government about ending this complicity. And it is also absolutely critical that we be sharp and strategic in how we do this work so that we are doing it in a way that organizes and grows our base and understanding of people in this country along with us. Because the way that we do this work is by changing the minds and changing the political calculus that our elected officials are making. That is ultimately what we are trying to do. We have a massive base and we need to show the power of that base to the people who are in elected office to get them to understand that the path of least resistance, the best thing for them to do is to just do what the masses of their constituents are demanding, which is ending US complicity in Israeli apartheid. We're in a wildly important political moment in this country when it comes to the US relationship with the Israeli government, because the cracks are showing. The Netanyahu government, this extremist government is showing and exposing itself and the cracks are really coming out, but that has not yet translated into tangible concrete reductions in material support. That's where we come in. That's where we have to do our organizing. So what we are working to do is over the next five years, so build support in Congress and in the administrations that we have ahead of us for restrictions, for conditions, for withholding, for limitations, for cuts on the money that we are sending to the Israeli government. We know that we are not about to knock out all $3.8 billion tomorrow. So this is about building toward that by building political support for these things as we go. And along the way, it's critical that we break the bipartisan consensus that for so consensus that has existed in Washington, DC for so long. We need to make it clear that support for Israeli apartheid is a right-wing agenda. It's hawkish, it's violent, it has no business anywhere, but well, it has no business anywhere. But our job right now over the next few years is to break that bipartisan consensus, to crack that as well. And the way that we're gonna get there, again. You guessed it, it's through organizing. It's through sharp organizing of our mass base of people and using our brilliant member leaders to bring our voices to our elected officials. The way that we're doing that is by proactive vehicles that we through direct advocacy, direct engagement, as well as grassroots organizing are bringing forward. Things like Betty McCollum's Palestinian and Children and Families Act that restricts funding, things like the Block the Bombs resolution a few years ago from Representative Ocasio-Cortez. These are all things that we are proactively pushing to win. And we are showing up big in fights to defend against legislation that would try to push forward the dangerous IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, which makes all of us less safe, or that would attack the right to engage in the boycott movement. All of these things 
are ways that we are going to be organizing ourselves to concretely change what materially the US government is supporting that the Israeli government is doing. And along the way, we are going to be actively exposing groups like APAC as the far right extremist, hawkish, violent organization that they are and peeling away bipartisan support as them, for them as well. And when we're doing all of this right, when we are doing all of these things, what we will see is that our politicians have to answer to us. They will see that they have Jewish constituents in their district who are demanding that they end complicity in Israeli apartheid and fight for actual freedom, justice, and equality. So with that, I'm going to now pass it over to Aran Afrati, our campaigns director and partnerships director, um, who's going to talk about the next set of strategic objectives in our work. Thank you so much, Beth, and thank you, Una. I love the way that you say my name. Um, hello, leaders, comrades, friends, political family. I'm honored to be here with you tonight, truly. You who built this house under its roof, we are now preparing to meet this moment. You have heard by now that this long process we all embarked on together came out of the need for JVP and JVP action to clarify our mandate in the movement for uh, liberation, distill our mission and get crystal clear on what we need to win. We are in a dire moment, as you heard, in which all arms of the Israeli state violence are working together with no restraints. They are uncovered, no longer this kind of brutality that is premeditated, organized, and well-funded from our Jewish communities who are fueling the final frontier of ethnic cleansing and entrenching apartheid on the ground. And they are more clearly exposing today all components of the ethno-national, racial, and militarized state, an agenda of supremacy, like Stephanie called it, that echoes and corresponds with the rise of fascism here at home. That is not a coincidence. To challenge these movements of supremacy, we are offering tonight a roadmap, a vision, a plan, not only in defense of our movements for freedom, but to take down the alliance that sustains the oppression against them. For us, it starts with taking responsibility for some of the biggest obstacles for the Palestinian liberation movement. Jewish Zionist institutions that are the counterparts to the gover government and military industries that Beth alluded to, given the moral cover, as well as the material support that sustains the horrific daily pogroms all across Palestine. Money that goes to projects of racial segregation, project of uh, Jewish supremacy and Palestinian dispossession. This is a dire moment we are in, but one that also holds great opportunity. The importance of JVP and JVPA refining our role was never greater. The risk never bigger, the stakes never higher. After hearing from you, from our partners in Palestine and on the global left, we know that to fully live into our purpose at this moment, we must and we will expose the political and material connections between the forces of the right in the US and Israel and disrupt their shared funding sources, interrupt the cultural, financial, institutional bonds between Jewish communities in the US and the Israeli government, fight anti-Semitism in a collective liberation framework and actively resist revisionist definitions designed to uphold Israeli impunity. Every single campaign JVP takes from now on we'll have to answer to these strategic objectives. We no longer wait for them to determine the rules of engagement. We are going after them through an array of new campaigns designed to divest from fascism and reinvest in freedom. In the next few months, you will see us move on breaking the bonds, shrinking US resources for Israeli settler organizations, dismantling anti-Semitism, in a framework of collective liberation and defeating the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism. And we will drop the ADL. We are ready to lead 
in this moment, Palestinians do not need saving. They are liberating themselves as we speak. But it is our job to remove the obstacles that hold all of us down. We need to take responsibility for our own communities to do decolonize our minds and our institutions and push harder than ever so that the land can be decolonized. And that is why we have taken the We Don't Buy It campaign, started as a local campaign by the incredible JVP South Florida chapter together with the South Florida for Palestine Coalition, a counterpart to a campaign by our friends from the Palestinian legal organization, El Haq. Our campaigns tracks the money of one of the richest and most influential families and businesses in the US through the tax haven of Panama to the Siegel Foundation in Israel that directly funds organizations that are tasked with racial segregation, expansion of Judaization programs, ethnic cleansing, and direct violence against Palestinians. But also tracking the same channels of money back here in the US to support fascism and the alt-right. Money that ends in the pockets of Netanyahu and the sentence and bring them closer together. As a response, we are not only fighting for a free Palestine, but understanding Palestine as a core issue of the left. The right is working together against us. To win, we need to connect our struggles on the left and work together to resist them in Palestine and everywhere. The official launch of the campaign together with our close partners at Haq will be in one month on October 26th. We want you all there with us, taking part in ending the complicity and support of our communities, removing the obstacles and moving from defensive to offensive. As the largest anti-Zionist Jewish organization in the world, we were built for this moment. You all build JVP and JVP action for this moment. We must and we will answer the call. I feel privileged to fight alongside you. Truly, for justice for all. Thank you so much. Thank you both so much. Um, incredible, inspiring. Um, so now that we know um, and have been talking about what we're trying to achieve in the next five years, um, it leads us next to how are we going to do it. Um, and for that, I'm so honored and excited to bring up um, the Director of Political Organizing Strategy, Elena Stein. Hey. Woo! I am so fired up. Thank you for every word, Iran. Um, and amen, amen to the feeling of it being an enormous privilege to fight alongside each and every one of, what is it, 500 and, last time I checked, it was 597 computers here tonight. And we know that there are so many watch parties happening in different cities. If you're in a watch party, let's hear it in the chat. Um, it is inc an incredible honor, truly, to be in this fight with all of you. So, Beth and Iran just laid out big strategic goals we have to weaken the U.S.-Israeli alliance, um, as Iran said, to remove these obstacles. So the question here is, how do we achieve those goals? We organize. Can we pull up the slides? If there is one image that I think sums up what organizing is, it is this next slide. It's this classic. And we could say a lot about this image, but one thing I wanna draw out of here is that it, if you see yourself as one of the individual fish down here below, the ones um, that are eating eating the, the, the opponent, it doesn't matter how smart each of those fish, it doesn't matter how skilled they are, how experienced they are, to win against our opponents, we have to get information around a shared strategy. We have to get organized. So here at JVP, when we say organizing, we mean this. Next slide. At the root, we are building a base. And by that, we mean a multi-generational, multiracial, 
Jewish communities rooted in shared values. And when we build that base, then we invest in the leadership of that base, right? Through building political analysis, organizing skills, and the ability to work together. And then once we are a crew, we are a base, we have invested in each other's leadership, we take action. We take action through campaigns and mobilizations that achieve concrete change in partnership with the broader movement for Palestinian freedom and intersecting movement struggles for justice. And that next arrow out kind of communicates that we then showcase that power. We communicate that power out to the world. And then the arrow back to build a base is to say that when we take powerful action, that's what draws people to us. And that in turn builds the base. Next slide. We seek to grow a massive, multiracial, intergenerational, cross-class, leaderful base of Jews who share core values, right? Well, how do we build that base? We do it through actively and warmly reaching out to new people and inviting them to join us. We do it through countless one-on-one -on -one conversations. We do it through new member orientations. We do it through having regular meetings that people can come to and then being enlivening. We do it through community gatherings, through events at holidays. And in these next five years, we're gonna get better and better at this, at actively moving people and inviting them in to join us. And in addition to our local chapters being power centers all around the country that are gonna do this best, our, our rabbinic council, our student network, our Havara network, and our network for black indigenous Jews of color and Sephardi and Mizrahi uh, Jews will grow and deepen as places to welcome in new members and to build that community. Next slide. Ella Baker, the consummate organizer and civil rights leader says this quote, I absolutely love. I have always thought that what is needed is the development of people who are interested not in being leaders as much as in developing leadership in others. So when we say leadership development, this is what we mean. We mean that every single person who's invested in is going out and building more leaders. We will develop in these next five years a core curriculum of political education and organizing training that weaves in the concrete knowledge, analysis, and skills needed to put our values into practice. Next slide. Local organizing is at the core of how we build and contest for power, right? All organizing is local and by being in a national organization, we amplify each other's power. So we will aim to grow in communities and on campuses across the country at unprecedented levels, building our base both broadly and deeply. And we will work to ensure that full chapters become local power centers and will create structure for easy to launch pods for local organizing in places where a few member leaders are ready to take specific action to advance national campaigns. Next slide. And we aim to grow. We are already the largest anti-Zionist Jewish organization in the world. And we are one of the biggest progressive Jewish organizations in the US. And here you'll see this image, we call it the base building onion. And it's a diagram to help us understand how people move into deeper involvement in organizing. And it helps us see the different layers of involvement in relationship to each other. And the point is that we are moving people from observing to supporting and supporting to joining, joining to participating, participating to lead, leading. And all these layers have to be in relationship with each other. They're in proportion with each other. So we're always figuring out how do we grow this onion? And you'll see here on the left, um, we have ambitious numbers of how we seek to grow. We aim to be ambitious here. This is ambitious, but possible. Next slide, please. And last but not least, we aim to make anti-Zionism irresistible. We wanna infuse our organizing with community building, with ritual, with cultural organizing, with art, with aliveness. And in so doing, we make it possible for people to leave Zionism without thinking that they're leaving behind Judaism and the promise of belonging in Jewish community, right? And especially for those who've been pushed out of family and communal structures for their anti-Zionism, we seek to offer thriving Jewish communities 
rooted in liberatory values and liberatory politics where they can find belonging. And that makes anti-Zionism not only viable, but the more enticing choice. And on that note, I wanna invite up Esther Farmer, a longtime member leader and one of the originators of Wrestling with Zionism, Reader's Theater and Storytelling Workshop and co-editors of the book, A Land with the People, to talk just a little bit about how we do our work. Thank you, Elena. Oh my God, I'm so proud of JVP. It's really, we should really have that, you know, used to be a fringe organization and we are not a fringe organization anymore. It's really quite something how we've grown and I couldn't be more honored to be a part of it. Um, so Esther, we've talked tonight about what goals we aim to achieve. And you've always said in our years of organizing together, this line that I hear over and over in my head, how we organize, how we do our work is just as important, if not more, than what we do. So can you talk a little bit about how we do this work together and what is the culture we want to be building in JDP that allows our goals to be possible? Yeah, I think there's been a, somewhat of a misconception on the left in this country that if you have the right political position, that's all you need. Um, but it's not so, because if we leave out how it is that we relate to each other, um, you know, it's often said people come for the politics, but they stay for how they're related to. We can't keep people unless people are related to in respectful and inviting and loving ways. So if we're going to implement the the um, the core values that you and Stephanie gave us around the accountability to Palestinian partners, the commitment to racial justice and collective liberation in general, and our responsibility to move Jewish communities. It's not a one off thing. It's a constant attention to the culture. And that means that we have to start at the level of conversation. So every conversation is an opportunity to build a relationship and every relationship is an opportunity to build community. And that's what makes anti-Zionism irresistible is that kind of community. Um, so we wanna invest, we have to invest in building those relationships. And we wanna foster a culture of collaboration over critique. And that takes work because we're very used to critiquing. <laughs> we know how to critique. We don't know, um, we have to advance our skills in how we build collaborative structures where meetings are like one brain. It's not the, who's the smartest person in the room. Um, so we wanna be radically welcoming. We wanna actively invite people in our lives to join us. Uh, we want to be willing to have the hard conversations and listen to people um, and build on the questions that they have, because so many Jews are having more and more questions, and we have an opportunity right now to really build on that. Um, and the other thing I think it's important for us to remember is that people can change their positions. Many of us on this call came from Zionist families and we've transformed. That's the hope for the future. So we don't want to relate to people as if it's impossible to change. They can change. So we want to make sure that we create the environment in which people have the support to change their position. Thank you for every word, Esther. All of that is gold that you put it into practice every day. Um, like so many others in JVP, you've organized in so many different movements and so many different contexts. And I wanted to ask in this context, what does it mean to you to organize intergenerationally? Well, it means a lot to me. Um, I mean, I really have to say on a personal level, my relationships with some of the younger folks in our chapter have been so incredibly nourishing. And my relationship with you has been one of the most meaningful in my political history really it's meant so much to me um and it's not just our relationship it's a relationship that's used by the whole chapter so i think that's something that we we want to do you know older generations have lived experiences to draw from um we have lessons learned and we have a historical perspective and younger people have an energy a creativity they have their finger on the pulse of what's coming into being um that's so important and we need each other and it's challenging it's not easy to organize intergenerationally. There are dynamics and tensions because people have different needs. And in the end, everyone wants to be able to contribute. And what we wanna do is create environments where people can make those contributions. 
So we want to invest in trusting relationships and remember that every conversation is an opportunity. So thank you for this opportunity to share that. Amen. We need each other. Every conversation is an opportunity. And Esther, it has been the honor of a lifetime, honestly, to organize with you and to collaborate, to create an environment in which people can organize across many kinds of difference, one of which is generational difference. So may all who come to JVP find and unwrap this gift as well. And may it be the secret sauce of what uh, allows us to achieve our goals, maybe something we can offer forward to the larger movement too. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, Esther. That was so beautiful. And thank you for sharing with us and embodying and speaking to that secret sauce of relationship and radical welcome and radical love and radical generosity that is so at the core of what we're trying to do, knowing that we can have these visions, we can have these commitments, but without organizing, it's impossible. But with organizing, anything is possible. And we see that over and over and over again. So we know that members and member leadership are at the core of everything JVP does and of these, these ambitious plans. So to talk to us about membership, we're going to hear from senior member organizer C.P. Prince and then director of chapters and local organizing Gemma Pash. So please join me in welcoming C.P. Um, hey everyone, my name is CP. I live in Durham, North Carolina, and before being on JVP staff, I was a member leader with the Triangle North Carolina chapter. Shout out to um, everyone from the Triangle here tonight. I got involved because someone I met invited me to a chapter event, and tonight I'm going to talk about base building and bringing Jewish people into the movement for Palestinian liberation and our member drive starting tomorrow. I want you to think about who is responsible for your choice to be here tonight. Think about who brought you in. We weren't born politically developed. We are changed through our relationships with other people and we are here because someone got us here. I talk to a lot of people who are hesitant to join organizations. And the fact is the times that we're living in are pretty unbearable. And I know that all of us wanna change things. That's why we're here. And like everything that's been said tonight, even if you have the most correct opinions alone, you can't change anything without the power to do so. And we build power by organizing people. And that's why JVP is a grassroots base building organization. Members are the base. And when we grow our base, we grow our power. And we need to both move at the speed of relationship and build the national base powerful enough to win. Think about a moment when you were taking any kind of action and thought, if we had more people involved, this would be easier. We might have won that campaign, or that legislator might have listened to us. That's why we build our base, and there are no shortcuts to doing so. So to the longtime JVP members, I'm talking to you. We are ready for this moment, and you're needed. Huge numbers of Jewish people are waking up to the brutality of the Israeli apartheid government. And if we're gonna fulfill our mandate, we need to be able to hold our line and bring people in who don't fully agree with us yet, or we leave power on the table. And like Elena and Esther just said, we can do this and be radically welcoming. So if there are people in your life who you've been avoiding asking to join this movement, it's time. We have to take responsibility for our people. To the new people, if tonight is your first event with JVP and you're not sure, what we're all about, welcome, you're needed. If you're committed to organizing alongside other Jewish people toward Palestinian liberation and a Judaism beyond Zionism, this is the movement home for you. And if you don't know what that means, but you're down to learn and grow, then JVP can support you. So to everyone, let's grow our base and build power. We're launching a member drive tomorrow. If you haven't joined yet as a dues paying member, now's the moment. I wanna see if we can grow the movement by 180 people tonight. There's a link in the chat to join. If you've been on the fence about joining or it's time to renew, do it now. Member dues are $18 a year, $3 a month. Our political opponents have deep pockets and to be an effective counterweight, we also need to get serious about scaling up our people, which takes resources. And if you're a member already and you're excited to invite people into the movement, 
Our member drive starts tomorrow. There's a link to join in the chat. We're calling people who've taken action with JVP but aren't a member yet because they haven't been asked. Let's never underestimate the power of an invitation. I'll see some of y'all tomorrow night. Over to you, Gemma. Thank you so much, CP. That was really moving. Um, grateful to be here with all of you. My name's Gemma. Um, and I'm gonna get right to it. So as we bring in those members and build our base, we know we need a lot of member leadership in order to make this plan real, to meet those strategic objectives that Iran and Beth laid out for us earlier. We need member leadership to be carrying out the organizing cycle that Elena took us through, leaders who are bringing in new people, who are developing others' leadership and skills, who are setting and carrying out strategy in different local contexts, who are running and winning campaigns. We're a membership organization rooted in grassroots organizing, and we need to invest more than ever before in the leadership of JVP's members, always with an orientation that being a leader means developing other leaders, means supporting other members to find their power and their role in the movement. It's really going to take all of us. So in that spirit, I'm extremely excited to announce one of the first places that we're focusing that leadership development energy to build up the core of member leaders at JVP which is an in-person gathering this January in Monterey, California. It'll be January 12th to the 15th. Over 250 of JVP's current and future member leaders will be coming together to build the skills and the relationships that we need to make the strategic plan, everything we've been discussing tonight, a reality. If you are listening tonight and you are resonating, and maybe you're newer to JVP or you're looking to find your role, and you're call feeling called to step into the work more deeply, to take on greater leadership, please sign up. Please at least take a look, read through it, consider it, talk to one of us. If you are a longtime leader, first of all, thank you. We want you to, we need you. And we invite you to also think about who else you can bring from your chapter, or pod, or network to this gathering. As some people may be thinking when I'm saying all this, you want to know more. It's way more information than I can cover here. An in-person gathering, especially in an ongoing pandemic, is not, it's not something small. So a comprehensive information form and interest form will be shared in the follow-up email to this event. So please take a look. If you don't use email, start today, look at the email tomorrow. And many more conversations will happen with existing leaders and chapters, pods, networks at JVP in the weeks to come. I want to name that this is just the start of this next phase of leadership development at JVP, it's going to pilot offerings in person that then continue online. And that's especially important because there's a limit to how many people can join and not everyone will be able to be together in person. So please do take a real look at this opportunity, really think about it. It's a big one. And also it's a starting point, not an end. I'll close there. Thank you, Gemma, and thank you, CP. It's so inspiring and wonderful to hear from both of you. And, and just thank you for all the work you all do. Um, and yeah, I mean, what a, what a what a deep honor, what a deep honor, as so many people have said, it is to organize together as part of this movement, this collective movement to organize alongside our Palestinian partners. It is, um, to me, I, being a part of JVP has absolutely transformed my life. I have dedicated the past decade of my life to this organization, and it has deeply transformed my sense of, of what's possible. And, and I think for so many of us, we come with such profound levels of despair and such profound levels of hopelessness and such profound levels of rage. And the role of organizing is to transform our despair and our hopelessness and our rage into collective action, which to me is the only thing worthy of hope. Um, and we know that part of our responsibility is to make sure that JVP is strong. That's part of our responsibility to make sure that we can follow through on these ambitious and important goals and commitments. We need to make sure that JVP is strong. And part of the way we do that is by making sure that it has the money that it needs to do the work that it needs to do. Um, so right now we're going to we're going to do a fundraising pitch um, because we know that the opposition that are up, we are up against a tremendous opposition. We all know this. And it the it, 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 and oftentimes it feels like that they have the financial and political resources that we could never compete with. But what they don't have, 
What very clearly they do not have is the power of this radical love and this radical vision and this radical commitment to liberation. They are organizing on the side of fear and supremacy, and they don't have the collective abundance that we tap into when we when we work together and commit to this world that we know is, is everyone deserves to be a part of. So um, JVP and JVP action are rare in that 90% of its budgets come from individuals, not foundations, not grants, from all of us together. All of we're all those little fish make you know this that's 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 how JVP does its work. Um, so what we're asking right now is um, for all of us to um, to donate, and we're going to do that right now because yes. moving our resources is one way. Moving our resources towards the Palestinian-led movement, towards Palestinian organizations, and towards JVP is one is an important way that we take action together. So we're going to invite you all right now if. Um, we have 520 people in this. We have 520 screens on this on this Zoom tonight. If everybody could give um, at least eighteen dollars, what? How much? How much would that be? Somebody put that in the chat who is skilled at math. That is ten thousand yes, dollars. And let's we, do it. Let's do it. So we know yes. some some of you can give way more than that, and some less. So we're going to ask you all to go ahead and put your donation in the chat right now, if you can put your commitment, what you can, what you could donate in the, in the, in the chat. And we're going to go ahead and tally our numbers. So if you can donate, please yes. go ahead and put it in your chat. Incredible. And, and we're going to get this opportunity um, as we've been on this call together to, to see our power. Oh my goodness. This is incredible people. We're going to, we're going to see our power in action. Um, we've been inspired by what this five-year plan is, how we're going to do it, getting more members, um, signing up, um, being so that we're, when, when we go, uh, when JVP action goes to Congress and says, um, yes, we have uh, 20,000 members as part of us. Um, we know that we're growing our members. Um, when uh, JVP um, asks for people to sign petitions, we know that we're reaching more and more people and uh, we're raising money right now as we speak. This is absolutely incredible. Um, we are so deeply grateful to, to be part of this community where we can just do this, where um, as Elena was talking about, um, we are these fish together and this is um, just one moment where we get to feel us in action and uh, getting into formation. And uh, you can just see this gorgeous waterfall of um, of membership. Yes, wow, yes, yes, wow. Recurring members, um, people literally putting their money where their mouth is. This is incredible. Every single every single dollar really doesn't matter the size of the donation. Like whatever we can do at any of our levels is exactly what's um, most useful. And we all know that this is one powerful strategy, one powerful way that we can make sure this organization has the resources it needs so that we can follow through on these commitments. Yes, because we know that um, th this is a five-year plan that we're talking about. And so we are we are getting ready um, to really enact this and um and like you said follow through is is such an important part of organizing is consistency and um continuing to show up and and finding hope with each other through our action it's so beautiful that none of us have to be the big fish that all of us get to be the size of the fish that we are and that together we can be this this giant collective force that is committed to disrupting and 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 dismantling the US Israel alliance and stopping U.S. support for Israel and Israeli apartheid and really creating a political home where Jews can leave Zionism and embody a com commitment to collective liberation. Um, so thank you all for these donations. This is really beautiful. Um, we That's are going to do some yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, we're seeing donations. We're seeing people renewing their membership, um, uh, people doing um, monthly recurring. Um, this is incredible. Um, wow, wow. And someone is gonna do math, not us, um, to tell us what we've raised. Um we'll come back, we'll come back in a little bit with with what we've raised. But thank yes. you all so much for these these pledges and go ahead and make your donation at the links that we're gonna give you. It's really beautiful to see our collective commitment to JVP and JVP action thriving. Mm. Thank you. And we're we're getting close to closing out the night. Um, and uh, so um, we have two more speakers to introduce. Um, uh, I'm honored to um, uh, in invite the incredible um, 
uh, civil rights veteran um, journalist, Zadi Zellner, um, who will be joining us now. Hi, Daddy. I know tech. Uh, yes, Daddy is coming to a screen. Near there she is. Hi, Daddy. Thank you. Well, I was given three minutes, and so I'm going to tell you three things, three minutes. I've got tissues in my hand because I'm going to get overwhelmed. Just forget it when I start weeping. Okay, first of all, I'm talking to the JVP membership and, of course, the leadership. You are precious people. I don't mean this in the psychotherapy sense. This is a fact. JVP is one of the most important American groups in my lifetime. You actually opened up the whole Jewish community. You changed the conversation. You did it locally, nationally, and internationally. You are not helping people in some missionary cause. You are fighters for justice. You are Jewish fighters for justice. So I'm asking you to look back and look forward at the same time, which I realize is difficult. I want you to remember our social justice tradition. And as Howard Zinn reminds us, we often think of our failures and we don't think enough about our successes. So think about what came out of the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. See, here I go. In 1911, where many of us, our forebears, jumped out of the windows of the tri a Triangle Shirtwaist Fire, out of which came the huge garment unions. I'm asking you to think about the people who went to Spain to fight in 1936. And I'm asking you to think of the people who went south in the 1960s and fighting racism all the way up to Black Lives Matter. Now, in some cases, these numbers have been exaggerated and maybe a little romanticized, but I am here to tell you that we were there beyond the numbers in the population. The next thing is I want you to look forward. We are going into the next 14 months, which I regard as absolutely crucial, crucial in decades. On the one hand, we have the transfer of Palestinians from their towns and villages. This is underway as we speak. We simply, cannot allow this to happen for the second time. I don't know what we're gonna to have to do. We're gonna to have to stop it. We're gonna to have to prevent it. We cannot allow this to happen again. The second thing is the fascists are at our own gates here. We have to up the ante. We have to fight like holy hell in the next 14 months. We have to participate in and create united front actions. I'm proposing that to you to add to already the huge list of things that you've already talked about. We can do this. You can do it. You will do it. The end. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dottie. We just love you so much. <laughs> we love you. We are so grateful for you. We are so grateful for all of the incredible elders in this organization who have been fighting for justice, for a free Palestine, for collective liberation, way longer than so many of us have been alive. We are so grateful for to you. It is the honor of a lifetime to get to learn from you. Thank you, Dottie, for those incredible words. Um, we, have to, we have to up the ante. Yes. Go ahead. No, just truly, truly, truly. And and that's what this call is about, is all of us leveling up and um, and we're doing this together and we just have to. Thank you everybody for being here tonight. We really, really appreciate the um, your being here, the commitments to fundraising, the signing up for these this five-year vision, this five-year plan, and really re-upping and leveling up our commitment to doing our part to being crystal clear about our mandate in the movement for Palestinian liberation and organizing our people, our people 
to into that movement and into the movement for 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 collective liberation this is our sacred 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 work this is in this moment of rising fascism and climate disaster I cannot imagine not having this community. I am so grateful to be part of this community and so grateful to bring in more people so that we can do our work. Um, and I and I just want to report that um, from the numbers, and we think this that's actually probably more than this, but in this call just now, we raised um, 7.7 thousand uh, dollars. Um, we just signed up 99 new members. Um, and that was just what we did in the last just tonight tonight together right now. Um, we are really honored to um, close the night with um, a poem from one of our um, beloved movement artists, uh, writer and artist Aurora Levins Morales. Um, we are so grateful for all the work that she does, um, and we are really grateful to bring her up to share her poem, Vea Hafta, to close um, this meeting tonight. Thank you so much for coming, and so grateful to be in this struggle with you all. Hi, I'm Aurora Levins Morales. I am a Caribbean Jew. My father's family farmed and made clothing in southern Ukraine. My mother's people farmed and made clothing too. They have roots 7,000 years old in Boriken, now known as Puerto Rico, and in northern Iberia, north and west Africa. I am both indigenous and settler, colonizer and colonized. It has taken a lot of work with my tangled family stories to find my ease and all the difficulty of that knot. I came to understand that Russia's imperial dreams and its anti-Semitism repeatedly forced my Jewish ancestors to uproot and settle on other people's land. We were expendable, so we were sent to hold down borders. In 1808, the Tsar set my family to farming the southern Ukrainian lands of native Tatars, making us a living barrier against the Ottoman Turks. In 1904, Russia and Japan went to war over Manchuria, and my great-grandfather fled the draft to Lenape land in New York. In the 1930s, his little sister Gittel and her family were persuaded to settle in Birabijan, on tribal lands along the easternmost border with China. We were planted like fence posts. In 1951, my blacklisted New York City parents came to this ancestral Arawak land where I now live. My mother brought her Boricua feminist rebellion back to the homeland, and my father brought the best of his Jewish radicalism, once rooted in Ukrainian soil, to the red clay of Indira. How does a fence post root and bloom, turn back into a tree, stop securing the borders of colonial occupations, open them instead. I invite us all to keep digging into the roots of our own and our ancestors' repeated settlings as we engage ourselves ever more deeply on behalf of our Palestinian kin. I wrote this poem for strength in a hard moment, and I gift it to you. Vea hafta. Say these words when you lie down and when you rise up, when you go out and when you return, in times of mourning and in times of joy. Inscribe them on your doorposts, embroider them on your garments, tattoo them on your shoulders. Teach them to your children, your neighbors, your enemies. Recite them in your sleep here in the cruel shadow of empire. Another world is possible. Thus spoke the prophet Roque d'Alton. All together they have more death than we, but all together we have more life than they. There is more bloody death in their hands than we could ever wield unless we lay down our souls to become them, and then we will lose everything. So instead, imagine winning. This is your sacred task. This is your power. Imagine every detail of winning, the exact smell of the summer streets in which no one has been shot, the muscles you have never unclenched from worry gone soft as newborn skin. 
the sparkling taste of food when we know that no one on earth is hungry, that the beggars are fed, that the old man under the bridge and the woman wrapping herself in thin sheets in the back seat of a car and the children who suck on stones nest under a flock of roofs that keep multiplying their shelter. Lean with all your being towards that day when the poor of the world shake down a rain of good fortune out of the heavy clouds and justice rolls down like waters. Defend the world in which we win as if it were your child. It is your child. Defend it as if it were your lover. It is your lover. When you inhale and when you exhale, breathe the possibility of another world into the 37.2 trillion cells of your body until it shines with hope. Then imagine more. Imagine rape is unimaginable. Imagine war is a scarcely credible rumor that the crimes of our age the grotesque inhumanities of greed, the sheer and astounding shamelessness of it, the vast fortunes made by stealing lives, the horrible normalcy it came to have, are unimaginable to our heirs, the generations of the free. Don't waver. Don't let despair sink its sharp teeth into the throat with which you sing. Escalate your dreams. Make them burn so fiercely that you can follow them down any dark alleyway of history and not lose your way. Make them burn clear as a starry drinking gourd over the grim fog of exhaustion and keep walking. Hold hands, share water, keep imagining so that we and the children of our children's children may live. Amen. Humbly hearted rise Won't be divided Rise With spirit to guide us Rise In hope In prayer We find ourselves in a hope, in prayer, we're right here. In a hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here. In hope, in prayer, we're right here and we're right. All of the children. Surround us, right in a hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here in a hope, in prayer, we're right here in a hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here.